What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Layout tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to go into our tiny house project and we're going to add skin materials to it. So we're going to add kind of the roof and then also the exterior cladding. Um, if you're looking for more great layout resources, make sure you check those out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash layout. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we've done so far in this model is we've really kind of focused on um, the actual interior of the building. Well, now what I want to do is I want to start adding some skin materials to the exterior of the building. And I want to note there's a few different ways that we could do this. So the easiest way to start adding skin materials to the exterior of our building is to just apply a material to all of these faces. So like for example, um, probably the easiest way to do this would be if you wanted to add a siding or something like that, you could just go into your materials, go to the brick cladding and siding and add something like this siding white. So, and that definitely works. Um, if you just want to like indicate what that's going to look like, you can definitely do that. In this particular case, I am planning on using an extension in order to do this. You could also do this manually, but I'm going to use an extension to add some siding material to the outside of this building. I will note this is not necessary. You do not have to pay for this extension. Um, that's just kind of what I wanted my workflow to be on this because I want this to have an actual skin material on it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do actually is I want to add kind of a slope to the roof on this building because as of right now we've kind of drawn this flat and um, I don't think in real life this would actually be a flat roof just like this. It needs to have some kind of a slope to it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to use the protractor tool. So the protractor tool can be found in the large tool set. And I'm just going to draw an angle, maybe something small, maybe like 15 degrees or something like that. And then once I've done that, what I want to do is I want to extend my roof up. Um, in order to intersect with that 15 degrees. I want to draw kind of a sloping roof like this. There's a few different ways you could do this. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the push-pull tool and I'm just going to push this up until I intersect with this uh, with this protractor line. And actually, it's kind of easier to just draw a line up and then hold the shift key until you intersect with that line. That just gives you a better point to inference to. And I'm just going to push-pull this straight up until I get to the end of this line, if it will actually inference to that, which it doesn't seem to want to do. So it seems to only want to do that if I tap the control key in order to create a new face. Sometimes the inferencing just gets a little bit funky, so I'm just going to tap that control key in order to do this. You can see how all that does is that just creates a new face up here instead of push pulling that existing face. And that's fine because what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a line from this point to this point. Um, just basically across the two points there. And so then all we're going to do is we're just going to push pull these back until they don't have any more thickness. So, and then you can erase out these extra edges because you don't really need them. You don't really need these either, though it's worth maybe hiding this just to make sure you're not accidentally erasing out this wall right here, which I did not. So we should be in pretty good shape. And so what we've done is we've given this some, um, you, you've, we've given this a little bit of, um, uh, a slope that we can then add our roof to. And one other thing I'm going to do really quick is I'm just going to select this edge and I'm going to use the move tool to move this down so that this lines up with the ceiling right here. And uh, if you can't get this to move up and down on the blue axis, you can select this line, tap the M key, and then when you select this, tap the up arrow key to lock this to the blue axis. And so now what we have is we have more of a slope to our roof. And I'm going to go in and erase out these extra lines in here because we don't really need these. And then once we've done this, what we can do is we need to start separating this a little bit. And when I say separating this, what I mean is um, we need to take this ceiling piece and put it in its own group because that's going to be a different piece of geometry and we need to put it on its own layer as well so that we can turn it on and off. And so to do that, I'm just going to double click on this and I'm going to try this. I'm going to try, whoops, I'm going to try erasing out this edge. I'm not 100% sure if that's going to do what I want it to do. See, the problem with erasing out this edge is it makes it so um, your wall isn't complete anymore. So um, if you erase out this edge, you can see how this kind of leaves you a gap in here, which you don't really want. So what we're going to do instead is for now, we'll just double click on this piece right here and we'll just make this a group. And then just like we've done with everything else, we're going to rename this. And we're going to rename this group ceilings. 
and we're going to drag it out of the walls group and we're going to put it on its own layer. So when I go into the layers section, I'm just going to click the plus button and add an ARCH dash ceilings. And then I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put my ceilings group on my ceilings layer. So now what that means is in our working view, when we go back to that, we can just uh, set that view so that the ceilings layer is turned off and then update that. So you can see how I turned off the ceilings layer and then I updated my working view. Now I can get in here and I can do work on the inside of my building without seeing that ceiling. And then you can also turn that ceiling back on just by toggling that layer. And one thing you may notice about this is we do have a gap in this uh, wall right here. And so I'm gonna try to just heal it. Probably the easiest way is just gonna be to heal it straight across on both sides for now. We may have to come in and make some adjustments to that later, but we'll leave it like that for right now. So now in our working view, you can see how we have our upper level um, showing up in here. And you can go ahead and erase out these extra lines. And so now this is still looking pretty good. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and first of all, I can erase out this guideline because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some cladding to the exterior of this build. And a lot of what happens next really has to do with the level of detail you want to get into. So like I said before, you could easily come in here and just apply a material to the exterior of this if you wanted to. It just really depends on what kind of a look you're going for. So if you wanted brick on the outside of this, you could just apply a material to that if you wanted to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use an extension called Instant Cladding, which is a part of the instant architecture package from Valley Architects. And I will note this is a paid extension, but what I like about this extension is it allows me to select faces like these, and I'm going to reapply the default material here. It allows me to select faces like these and quickly add a cladding to it. So I can just click on this, I can select a type of wall cladding. So in this case, maybe something like these beveled panels. And then I can also go in and I can adjust the different uh, parameters that go along with them. So I can set if it's gonna create the corners on it, I can set the thickness and the depth, I can set the different kinds of sidings, all those different kinds of things. Then once I do that, all I have to do is run that and that's gonna apply that material to the exterior of this building. And for whatever reason, it is not coming in here and creating the corners, but we can go ahead and leave it as is for right now. And so you can see how that could be a huge time saver as opposed to me trying to figure out how to model all of this manually. And so now, we have a skin material in here, but there's something we need to be aware of, which is now if we go in and we look at our floor plan, so if we go back to our floor plan view, what you're gonna notice is your skin is now hanging off of this, which uh, can get really annoying if you're trying to set your dimensions um, inside of layout. And so what we need to do inside our floor plan view is we need to take all of that skin material and put it on its own layer so we can turn it off. So I'm just gonna go back in here and I'm just gonna select all of these different skin materials. And I'm gonna look in my outliner and I'm gonna make those a group. And inside that group, I'm just gonna call this something like cladding or skin material or something like that. And then I'm gonna drag this out of the walls group and I'm gonna create a layer for ARCH-cladding. So now I can take that group and I can place that on the cladding layer. And so you can see how we're doing what we've always done in here in the sense that um, we're just setting this up so you can turn everything on and off depending on what you need. So like for example, I'm just gonna go back in my floor plan view. I'm gonna turn off cladding and I'm gonna update that view. So now that view is gonna show up with just your walls in here and not your additional skin on the outside. So that's not gonna throw off your dimension inferencing and everything else. And so probably the last thing I'm gonna do in this case is first of all, I'm going to create a layer or a view and I'm gonna call it all on. 
And so the only thing my all on layer is going to do is whenever, sometimes you're going to want to have a working view where you can get in here to make changes. Sometimes you're going to want to have an all on layer so you can see everything in your model. And so once you've done that, what you can do is you can come in here and you can draw out your roof. And drawing out your roof is pretty easy. Um, because we already have these edges created, we can just kind of use an inference here. You can see how if I start on this corner and then I put my mouse over this edge and then I move my mouse this way, it's going to give me a parallel inference. Well, that parallel inference is going to allow me to set up my roof. So I'm going to type 8 inches and hit the enter key here. Then I'm going to draw a line on the red axis until it's level with this end here. Then I'm going to extend that out another 4 inches. So you can see how what I'm doing is I'm using inferencing in order to rough out the shape of my roof. And then I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode to make a copy of this little edge right here. That just gives me a line that I can draw directly along. Um, so you can see how that kind of sets up my inferencing and then I can do the same thing where I draw a line to this point and then I extend this another eight inches. And so we can use this. I'm gonna draw a line eight inches here. And then I can just draw a line along the red axis that's the same length as this one and then just draw a line across here. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase out these extra edges and I'm just going to draw a line across these two corners and then erase it out. And you can see how what that does is that gives me a face in here. Once I get the face in here, I can push pull it up to a thickness of something like six inches. So you can see how I'm able to easily add a roof in here just by using that inferencing. Then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna triple click on this to select the whole thing. I'm gonna put it in a group and I'm gonna put that on a layer. So the group is gonna be called roof. The layer is gonna be called ARCH dash roof. And so I'll just drop my roof group on the roof layer. And there we go. So now we may have to update our working view. And this is one thing I haven't quite figured out in SketchUp is these layers come in active instead of turned off. So when you create a new layer, um, these come in as turned on. There may be an extension that can affect this. But in this case, I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to update my working view with the roof off. And then you may have to go in and look at some of your floor plans as well and just make sure that everything, or things like the roof, if you don't want them to show up, don't need to show up. So like for example, I could turn off roof here, I could turn off ceilings or I could leave ceilings on. It's kind of up to you. And one thing you may want to think about when you're doing this is you may want to think about taking that uh, ceiling view and I'm going to turn everything back on or that ceiling that you've created and I'm going to add a section cut real quick just so I can see what I'm doing. You may want to think about giving just a little bit of thickness to your ceiling that you have in here. Otherwise what you're going to have is you're going to have what's known as Z fighting, which is when these two faces both occupy the same space and everything flashes. So you may just want to push pull this to something like um, um, whatever the thickness of your drywall might be. You might have some stud framing in there too, but um, so maybe something like, we'll just call it two inches. So now if you go back and lo you look at your elevation view, you can see how you've got this kind of sloped roof in here. And it looks a little bit different, but what we're probably going to end up doing on this anyway is applying a material to it. So let's say, for example, that we thought this ceiling was going to be like a wood or something like that. We might go ahead and apply that wood material in here um, just so you can kind of see that that's where your slope ceiling starts. And you may even set this up where you don't even see the ceiling. That's something you can think about with your plans. Um, so you may just want to go ahead and apply a material to this if you want to. So overall, if we go back to our all on view, 
you can see how what we have, and I can go ahead and erase out this section cut because we're not using it for anything anymore, is you've got your building with your exterior cladding and your roof set up in a way where you can get back in and still edit it. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. I have a feeling there may be some questions about this workflow. If there are, leave them in the comments below. So if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.